My name is Ted Gordillo and I work on the HRX staff effectiveness team. Today we're going to be talking about the progressive conversation. So if that's not what you're expecting to hear today, there's no shame in leaving now. Okay? So good. Good. It looks like you all found the right place. Uh, to begin our time though, as I kind of mentioned with the, the staff uh, development cycle quiz, um, uh, we're going to just briefly review that and the components of it to help us set context for today's conversation training, which is the progressive conversation. So go ahead, turn to the front, and we're going to go through the answers of our quiz there and, and see how we did. Now, I'd mentioned when there was a few people in here earlier, if you don't pass, that doesn't mean you have to leave staff. All right. Um, but hopefully this is another review uh, for you to uh, be reminded of the different components of the staff development cycle. All right, so the first ones, you're matching the definitions to uh, uh, the words or the phrases of the core competencies. And you'll see at the bottom, there's a word bank with them. And I actually snuck in a few extras just to confuse you guys. But we'll see how we did. All right, how do we go with number one? Let's see, what do you get for the answer for number one? MPD, all right, right, Ministry Partnership Development. We started easy, right? That was, that was a pretty easy one. All right, number two, how did we do on that one? Christ-centered example. Christ example, good job. Number three, team participation, excellent. Number four, personal maturity. You guys are knocking it out of the park here. Number five, Teachability, self-awareness. Number six, job competency, excellent. And then finally, number seven, dependability. All right, good. So hopefully that's what you got. If you didn't, go ahead and make those changes. It's good for you to make sure you have the ones correctly matched up. Um, number eight, what does PF stand for? Position focus, all right. CMO? Critical mission objective, right. KDA? Key developmental assignment. Uh, PDP? Personal development plan. Good. And uh, number 12, RMO? Religious missionary order. And that's important because that usually determines whether you have to do number one, which is MPD, for better or for worse. All right. Uh, then number 13, staff development cycle. Good job. All right. Hopefully there wasn't too much confusing on those either. All right. Finally, let's take a look at the staff development cycle timeline. All right. So this is when the staff develop the different components of the staff development cycle are supposed to more or less occur. All right. So we have the opening conversation with a box there. That's going to be kind of the starting month of when things happen in the staff development cycle. Then we have a bunch of months where things happen, and that's part of what we're going to be talking about today. Uh, then we have a mid-year conversation, and uh, we did that actually a couple months ago. We did a training on that, and so some of you were in that. Um, I taught a couple of those sessions. And then uh, we have kind of a few more months where some more stuff happens, and then finally the end, the culminating conversation uh, where uh, it all comes to a close, and then you start the process all over again. All right, so. Uh, when I put the next slide up, it'll kind of show everything. But what, what month do you think, or are we supposed to be starting the staff development cycle? In May. Close. I, did, I know you did this past year. But theoretically, it's supposed to start in June. And the reason is because um, uh, May 31st is the date when all, the conver or all the, um, your final reviews are done for the previous year. And so... Um, then you will, you will set the goals in June for the next year. So June, July, August, September, October, um, and then November, December is the mid-year conversation, kind of rough time slot, kind of between uh, Thanksgiving and Christmas is roughly the ideal time. If you have to do it because you got a lot of people that's you, that, are, that uh, you oversee, you may have to do it a few weeks before Thanksgiving, and you, or you may have to spill in into the new year but roughly that time frame is what you're looking for. All right, and then we have a few more months where you're working on your goals, and then finally your culminating conversation, which is uh, kind of your end of the year review. 
Now let me just note here something, uh, just in general. Uh, hopefully we can have a bit of a dialogue. So if you have questions as we go along or comments, feel free to um, interject those questions or comments. And actually, uh, last group especially was quite, uh, it was quite a fruitful time as we discussed different things. Um, there was a few people who had some ideas and some experience uh, in the staff development cycle that I think really made the time a bit more rich um, than just having me uh, speaking up here the whole time. So, um, so questions, comments, feel free to engage uh, throughout their, our time today. Yes? Um, it seems like with this plan, we have a whole set of conversations in May, and then we have a whole set of conversations in June. Would it be advisable to have one conversation with each person that culminates one and, and then sets up the next? Um, there's definitely a connection between the culminating um, conversation and the opening conversation. Uh, what might be a, a, uh, an issue is a time restriction because um, all, the, all the culminating conversation reviews have to be done by May, May uh, 31st. So, uh, for instance, if you were going to do two at once, you may end up spending two to three hours doing both of those, doing a proper review and then setting them up goals, um, as opposed to, you know, maybe an hour and a half just doing the, the culminating conversation. So, again, if you have a large number of people, that's going to take a lot of time um, because the, the kind of, I, I believe the, the computer cutoff is May 1st when you can start doing the reviews and they all have to be within, the, within that month. Uh, I, I would probably recommend separating simply because it gives the person time to process maybe some of the goals that they didn't get done and what ones would be good to carry over, what ones are maybe because their job has shifted a little bit throughout the year may not even be applicable to them anymore. Um, and so it gives the person a bit of time to process through as well as, I mean, um, they need to come up with their own PDP goals. Um, you need to be, if you're a team leader, you need to be thinking through the, the KDA. So some of that might require a bit more time to set in place. So, but uh, theoretic, could they be done in tandem? Sure. So that's a, that's a call that you're going to have to make. All right. Any other questions before we move on? We do have one final question, the extra credit question, which I know when I was in school, I always tried to get the extra credit question, right? That is, what is the staff development cycle? Okay, it's important that we're on the same page here of what the staff development cycle is. And so, did anybody come up with kind of a, a working definition of the staff development cycle? I take that as a no. Okay. <laughs> or everybody's really sleepy. They're in the lunchtime slump here. All right, so what is the staff development cycle? <clears throat> Staff de development cycle is the process of personal and professional growth which contributes to the fulfillment of the organizational mission. All right. So it's basically uh, helping people to grow both personally and professionally, uh, individually, and so that they're contributing to the mission of the organization. All right. So that's our definition for the staff development cycle. Now, just um, you'll see underneath where your quiz was, a little fold that looks like this. All right, this has a lot of goodies in. Well, maybe you don't think they're goodies, but hopefully at some point you'll think they're goodies. Um, and you'll see that there's a set of notes for today. Um, I'm going to just introduce a few of the first things here. Um, there's a sheet that has the crew core competency definitions. All right. So they, they're all there on one page, ready for you to post up right next to your desk so you can read over them again and again and be familiar with them. And there's also a copy of kind of the staff development cycle here that's, that's um, all put together for you. All right, so those are some of the first few goodies for you to look at or to have. So, you might want to keep the notes out the, just to refer to. You don't have to. If you like jotting down your own notes, that's fine. And uh, by the way, we have uh, these notes posted um, on Crew Talk. So uh, there was a pre-training video you were supposed to watch with Barrett Brown. How many people did that? Yeah, some, some people. If you didn't get that link, um, you missed out. No, you can still watch it. Uh, but on that, on the, on that 
uh, crew talks, there's a um, progressive conversation. There's a little uh, space for where video is going to be, and you guys are the lucky people who are going to be in our videoed session, right? So um, uh, that's going to be posted up there in a couple weeks' time, as well as um, all the, the notes that you have and the, the job aids that you can download. So, so just know that you can, you'll be able to access and get soft copies of those. All right. Well, today, oops. Oh, yeah, that's right. Today we're going to be, um, oh, question. So uh, you, you probably have seen this already in your, your diagram in the folder. But anyways, between the opening conversation, the mid-year conversation, and the mid-year conversation, the culminating conversation, I said there's some things that should be happening. What do you think though, that, that should be? The ongoing conversation, the progressive conversation, right? And so that's what we're going to be talking about today, is the progressive conversation, all right? Now, um, the progressive, great. So let me give you a little illustration to kind of give you a visual of how to think about the progressive conversation, all right? So if you were in my training for the mid-year conversation, you know I had this map up and I had told you that our family was planning to drive up to Michigan where I'm originally from, kind of the Grand Rapids area. And so here's us in, in Florida. And I talked about how we were going to drive up here and kind of made a relationship between the mid-year conversation kind of being Nashville, kind of halfway, and kind of a checkpoint to make sure we were on the right track to make sure we were going to get to my family's place for Christmas, all right? Well, uh, we, we made the trip, and uh, we, we made it there, made it back, no dramas. Uh, well, I'd say no dramas, but minimal dramas uh, with our three kids in a very long car ride, two, two days of car rides. But uh, anyways, uh, one of the things we had in our car is a GPS, and uh, um, the GPS would help make sure that we were on track as we went along. So whenever we went off to get gas or to make a bathroom break or to get some food, the, uh, the GPS would alert us that, hey, we're starting to veer off the course that, that we were supposed to be on, right? And it was interesting because even when we are on these long stretch, stretches of highway, like 300 miles, uh, where there was no, no reason to turn off, the GPS every once in a while would pipe up and say, continue on such and such a road for the next 100 miles. And so even though I was on track, or we were on track to where we were supposed to be going, it was just kind of a, a reassuring voice that say, hey, you're on the right track. Don't worry about turning off. Keep going straight. All right? And so that's a way to think a little bit about the, the progressive conversation. So we're going along. It's something that's kind of ongoing, continuing. It, it's giving you feedback to say even once you get off a little bit or, make, or just giving you um, comments or encouragement if you're on the right track to, to keep going down that track. All right? So it's kind of visual for you guys to keep in mind as we, as we go. So the progressive conversation is a regular dialogue of growth and advancement. And you can see regular, that means it's something that should be happening uh, um, uh, ongoingly. All right? It's a dialogue of growth. All right? There should be growth involved and advancement moving forward. All right? So in the introductory slide, when you guys walked in, there was a little tagline to our progressive conversation said, because it's ongoing and forward moving. So if you kind of remember the little tagline, the progressive conversation, because it's ongoing and forward moving, you'll have that general idea of what it's all about. All right. The progressive conversation brings the staff development cycle into the team members' everyday workspace. All right. And so it's not just kind of this nebulous thing that's up on the computer in e-performance that gets looked at you know, two or three times a year because you have to. It's actually taking those goals uh, uh, and the core competencies and bringing them down into the workplace where everybody is, is experiencing the, those through feedback. All right. And uh, I think if done effectively, the progressive conversation is actually the most influential and valuable part of the staff development cycle. And primarily because so much of the time of the staff development cycle is just working away on your goals and getting, you know, the, the, uh, and the picture, right? We had four month blocks where you're kind of working on your goals, getting feedback, making sure you're on track, redirecting as necessary. And, and so if done correctly, uh, there shouldn't be any lot of surprises when it becomes, when it comes mid-year time or it comes end of the year time. 
Uh, and really, as a team leader, if you invest well um, uh, during, kind of during the year regularly uh, through these, this progressive conversation idea, um, there shouldn't be any surprises for you either at the end. All right. Any questions so far before we jump into kind of the nuts and bolts of how this actually plays out? You guys feeling okay about it? It's good. Good. Just on a side note, um, as a good Christian organization, we like to spiritualize things sometimes. And there's good biblical precedence for this, right? If we look at Moses and, and God, for instance, there's kind of a lot of dialogue that happens between, between them. Peter and Jesus, right? Paul and Timothy. Um, Esther and uh, Mordecai. Ruth and Naomi, these are just some examples of where we see someone come, coming along someone else and kind of helping them along in the direction that they're supposed to be going on a regular basis. All right, so what is the purpose of the progressive conversation? Well, it's to create an ongoing feedback-rich work environment. All right, and we kind of already explained that to a certain extent, right? It's ongoing, it's lots of feedback, uh, and it's, you know, here at work. So now... Presuming that we create this ongoing feedback-rich work environment, what are the benefits or the payoff of creating an environment, feedback-rich environment? Okay, so this is your chance to respond. So what's the payoff or the benefit for creating this feedback-rich work environment? Okay, I know the answers are in your notes, but without looking, what are some ideas that you've experienced maybe already in the staff development cycle as you've implemented it or that you can perceive would be some positive outcomes. Yes, Brian. It, it, it creates an environment where people are real about where they need to grow mm -hmm. and so they're more likely to grow Good. if they're real about it. Yep. So creates a bit more transparency, openness. Good. Here's a few that, that uh, I'm going to put forth, and uh, you guys, I think, mentioned most of them. It's not an exhaustive list, but at least it gives you a few ideas of the benefits here. Uh, first of all, it keeps the team member focused and forward, moving forward on his or her, her goals, right? It limits distractions, as, as Todd was talking about here, provides accountability to help them moving forward and keep them focused, and Mark was also mentioning that. Provides a motivational boost and raises workplace morale, all right? And I think this is really a key thing, all right? And uh, uh, Mark was also mentioning that it, it communicates that you care about that person, you care about what they're supposed to be doing and how they're going and getting that accomplished, all right? So if you can imagine, and maybe you don't have to imagine because you've experienced this, you set some goals for the year, and the only time your supervisor ever talked to you about those goals again was at the end of the year, and to, to give you evaluation, all right? And that's what um, the whole staff development cycle is trying to eliminate, um, is that kind of thing. And you, you, know, you may have got some of it done, you may not, you, you don't know what, how your supervisor is gonna react if you didn't get some of it done, and so there could be a lot of tension. All right, but touching base, yeah, uh, lets people know that you care, all right? And it helps them move forward. When I was in Australia, one of the things I enjoyed doing was running. Uh, I still enjoy running, but uh, there was a park that was nearby our house, and it was a great, it was a gigantic park, and uh, it, it, it was about eight miles to go to run around the perimeter, and so I'd do that probably, I don't know, once or twice a week to, to help stay fit. And one day, I was getting ready, and my son, who was about six years old at the time, decided he wanted to ride his bike along with me, all right, and so that seems like a great idea because um, it's a lot easier to bike eight miles than it is to run, but eight miles is still very long ways for a little kid. So I said, okay, I warned him it was gonna be really hard and tough, but he's like, I still wanna do it, Dad. I said, okay, we'll do this father-son bonding moment. We'll, we'll see what happens, all right? So the first about mile and a half is completely downhill, and so he's just loving life. He's just cruising along, and after the first one, I'm huffing and puffing, and I got sweat running down, and he's just having a good old time. All right, then we get to the next about mile and a half, and it's pretty flat. So he's doing okay. He's having to pump a little bit, you know, to keep up, but still not a big struggle. Well, we get to the point about three miles in that there's, a, there's kind of, because we've gone down quite a bit, now there's a fair bit that we have to go back up. So probably about three-quarters of a mile. There's a couple sections where there's inclines, but 
This is the first kind of major one. And so he starts out, and I said, hey, get a, get a big head start because uh, you're going to need it. All right, so he, he gets up. He gets probably, I don't know, uh, 50 yards in, ahead of me. And he starts to slow down and slow down and slow down. And finally, he stops. I can see that he stopped. And I'm running, running. I finally catch up with him. And I said, okay, do you need some help? You want a boost? And uh, he's like, yeah, can you give me a boost? So, so uh, I come behind him, get a big run, and push him forward on his bike. And he goes wrong and pedals and pedals for a bit. And then I catch up with him, and he's almost stopped. And then I give him another big push again. And that happens for probably about five or six times till he makes it to the top of the hill. And so that idea of kind of getting behind your team members and pushing them along, especially when it's difficult, is a huge motivator. And uh, it obviously helped motivate my son to continue on. He said, you can do it. You can do it. I'll help you. And we did make it all the way around. He was pretty tired at the end. Uh, but I was proud of him that he decided to stick it out. So it was a good, a good bonding moment for us. But a, a great example of coming behind someone and helping them uh, continue to be motivated. And even when he wasn't going uphill, just saying, hey, you can do it, especially towards the end when it was flat and he was getting really tired. You know, we're almost there. Let's make it to the home. That's our goal. So kind of keep that in mind as, as motivating, a, motiv a motivational boost. All right. Uh, finally, advances. Uh, uh, another payoff or benefit is it advances the organizational mission, which for us is a great one. It's God's mission of fulfilling the Great Commission, right? So um, that's one of the, the other big payoffs. All right. So on the video, that the, the pre-workshop video that uh, you were asked to watch, if you got that link, um, Barrett Brown asked you to do a small assignment. Does anybody remember what that small assignment was? No? We have to make it more memorable. It was to brainstorm ways to make feedback an ongoing part of the working relationship. All right, so brainstorm ways that we can make, practically speaking, feedback an ongoing part of our working relationship with, with our team members. So uh, maybe you had a chance to think about that. If not, let's just take a, a couple seconds and um, think about it and then just sh um, share some ideas uh, with the whole group as far as ways that we can, practically speaking, make this a reality. All right, let's uh, bring it back to the large group. And it was good. I heard some good conversations happening. Um, we'll just quickly go table by table. And if you have one or two ideas to share, uh, that would be excellent. All right, so let's start with the table here with uh, these, you guys. So anybody want to share an idea or two? We talked about um, celebrating the completion of a critical mission objective. Mm. That's a great idea. That's an excellent idea. Good. Right, let's go to the table back here Would you guys. One or two things. Well, I said an area of development for me that I get convicted about is stopping at each person's workstation. I have nine people on my team. I'm very available when they come to me, but mm -hmm. I don't always get out. I'm very happy to sit at my desk and get some work done. Yeah. And so I know that that would improve feedback if I were more intentional and yep. take more time to stop at each of their desks yeah. to see what they had to say. That's good. That's a great idea. In FSG, in our departments, we have been meeting together and sharing our piece with each other okay. and giving each other feedback on those kinds of things. So is that peer-to-peer -peer then? It's good. That's good. So it doesn't always have to be the supervisor giving feedback, right? That's a great idea. Yeah, good, good. So those regular touch points, um, you're not letting it go too long. That's excellent. Um, Last Monday, we had our HRX staff meeting, and I'm going to share this just as an example because I thought it was a great idea of making feedback a regular part of the work environment. Um, Barrett Brown, who's the director of HRX, took about 45 minutes during our staff meeting to go kind of department or not, um, yeah, uh, uh, team by team and highlighted some of the things that the team was doing really well and really gave kudos to. The, the different teams as well as certain individuals on the different teams. And it was really an encouraging time for everybody to celebrate uh, what the teams had been accomplishing, a bit like cri what Chris was saying here, uh, celebrating what teams had accomplished as well as some individuals. And I think everybody left really encouraged by, it was a bit cheesy, but you have to understand Barrett if you don't know him, but it was very encouraging. So that's an example that, that I've recently experienced. All right. Well. Uh, 
kind of two ways that we're going to talk about today about this progressive conversation or two forms will be a formal or informal. So even at some of the things you guys were talking about, some of them, as Charles was talking about, is probably a bit more on the formal way where we can establish regular touch points with the people that we were working with. But there's also lots of informal ways that we give feedback that we want to talk about as well. So we're going to start talking about kind of a formal process. And I use that term kind of loosely, all right? Um, this isn't nearly as formal as the mid-year conversation. Uh, but it's formal in the sense that you need to provide a bit of structure for it, all right? So um, we want to help our team members rise to excellence, all right? So, it's a nice little acronym. We love acronyms and, and crew. So <laughs> RISE hopefully will help you um, work through this process more formally uh, walking someone through a progressive conversation. All right. So review, identify, support, and encourage. All right. And I tried to come up with something that was easy for you guys to remember. So hopefully RISE does the job. All right. First of all is review. So review the goals and its specifics. Clarify exactly what the team member is aiming to achieve. All right. So you want to make sure that you are on the same page as your team member. And this should have happened when you established the goals. But uh, sometimes over time, uh, things have happened. Things might get a little bit muddied. All right. So what you first want to do is just establish uh, what the expectation is, what the goal is, what they're supposed to be achieving. All right? And so a couple questions that you as a team leader want to make sure are answered in your mind is, what is the team member supposed to be doing and what is she or he looking to accomplish? All right? Well, both of you and your team member should know that. All right? So um, getting clarity to those, those couple questions. All right? Pretty straightforward. You're just, again, going over what they're supposed to be doing. All right? Next is I, identify. Identify how things are going, the good, the bad, the ugly, all right? How does the team member perceive things are going? What, what are some of the difficulties they're facing in their goals or specific goal or core competency? What are the, maybe there's something that's too easy or they've um, uh, uh, found not very challenging and they're actually a person who likes being challenged. Um, uh, and then uh, providing some feedback on your observations. All right, so a couple questions to be answered is, what is the reality of where the team member is at? All right, not just supposed to be where they are, but where they are, where they're supposed to be going, but where they are currently. So it's kind of like a, a miniature one here, right? You know they're here, and you're moving towards here. All right, so how are they progressing? And it may be you're just talking about moving them up to this next little step, all right, uh, in that process. But um, see, making sure they're on track of where they're expected to go. All right. The next is support, and uh, you can support in kind of three ways. First of all, be a good listener. All right. You want to listen to what they're saying, but sometimes uh, what they're not saying, or kind of reading in between the lines, asking questions that clarify. Um, that's the second second bit. Uh, things that you're not understanding completely, or that uh, you you don't understand why they're finding it difficult, or uh, why there's an issue maybe with a team member. All right, so you're asking questions, strategic questions, um, uh, in, in response to listening well. Right? Again, and these, these next two, the S and E, kind of work in tandem with R and I, but I've just kind of delineated them out um, just as a way for you to think through the process in a little bit more step-by-step um, uh, -step way. Right? And then make some uh, observations. And so you think of it as you're kind of coaching this person through this process uh, of uh, walking through their goals, see how they're doing. And you're going to obviously want to be giving your perspective on how they're doing on things. So what's some questions to be thinking through. What steps can the team member uh, take to move forward to stay focused? All right, are there things that are distracting them? What does he or she need? Maybe there's some training that he or she needs. Maybe they need a bit more time right, allocated towards the specific goal. Um, how can you help? All right. Uh, if they need more time, you can say, OK, I know um, we have this coming up as a team. Um, that's something, you know, why don't you take those two hours instead to, to accomplish this, because it's not as critical that you're there <laughs> at this particular meeting. So it could be uh, working through with that team member um, how they can move forward or stay focused, what they need, and how you can help. And then finally is the encourage bit. Encourage the team member in areas that are going well uh, and motivate in areas that are lacking. So 
Um, again, going back to that, that um, example that I gave with Barrett, encouraging the, the team members in HRX, um, he just did a great job just saying, hey, you know, you did a great job, uh, what you did with this or that, and, um, you know, excellent work, keep going, you're on track. Uh, if they need a bit of motivation, you know, keep going, I know you can do it, keep trying, you know, I know it's difficult, but uh, I know you, you are able to, you have the strength to do it, you have the cap capacity to do it, all right? Uh, how can you specifically encourage the team member? All right, and it's, it's, I think it's really important that you do specific, not just great job, you did a great job, but you did a great job with X, all right? Or you did a great job with Y, or keep going on such and such, all right? Be specific about encouraging your team member, all right? Um, so I'm just gonna do a little bit of a diagram to give us a visual of what this looks like, all right? So rise is kind of here at the end. You're working towards something, and again, it could be the ultimate goal, it could be an intermediate, intermediary step, uh, depending on what you discuss with your, your uh, team member. But you do actually, you do want to look at that ultimate goal uh, to make sure that's clarified, and then maybe a sub-goal. All right, uh, and then identify where they're at, their current reality, right there. And the next bit is support, kind of bridge the gap between these two with support and encouragement. All right, and so there's a visual picture to help you out, help you remember that. Now, um, if you look in your folder, a couple things to point out. First of all, there's this thing called the Progressive Conversation Summary Sheet. Well, this is called a job aid, and job aid is to help you with your job if it's helpful, all right? So just a disclaimer here. If the stuff that I'm introducing you today is not helpful for you and you have a better system, by all means, use your better system, all right? These are just kind of some, some tools for you to use if you kind of have nothing to work off of. It's a starting point, all right? So the Progressive Conversation Summary Sheet, um, basically you, ha you see a space for the team member's name. You can put the, the goal, the, the competency that you're, you're looking at for that particular time. Um, and then you see the rise, the review, identify, support, encourage. And then a place at the bottom to um, put down action points for your team member and, uh, and you as a team leader if that uh, you see that that's necessary right one of the great things about using something like this is that you have a record especially if you're doing this on a fairly regular basis of how the person is doing so the reality is that at come may and when you need to do the that uh, culminating conversation and rate the person um, i know for me if i get much past a month you know i can think of maybe that far back with with some sort of detail but beyond that, uh, it starts to get a little bit more fuzzy, all right? And so if you're doing this on a semi-regular basis and recording a little bit of information on this, that way when you comes to making that a final evaluation or even next year or the mid-year conversation, you have a bit more, uh, I guess you'd say, concrete uh, evidence uh, to make a rating, all right? So, and I'll, I'll also mention that uh, this can be done on the position focus tool so there's a place where you can enter comments and notes, um, and so you, you that that would be another great place to enter these. And so not that you have to do it on paper. This is just a, a kind of a starting starting uh, point tool for you to use. Now for me, I'd probably prefer just to do it on paper. It's a bit less cumbersome than having to log on and type it all in and stuff like that. Um, I can just pull it out of a file, you know, bring it with me, and it's pretty easy. But um, either way, again, it's a tool for you to use how you see fit. If it's beneficial, use it. If it's not, discard it. It won't bother me either way. The important thing is that you are carrying out progressive conversation in an effective way. So, all right. Now, the second thing is I want to point out is this nice colorful bridge diagram, which looks, well, not really, doesn't really look that much like it. But the idea is the same, all right? This comes from the coach approach. Now, how many people have gone through coach approach training? All right, so well, a, lot, a lot of you have, all right? So the idea of what I just outlined with RISE is the same as really the coach approach. And so uh, if you're already familiar with the coach approach, you already use it with your team members, you you're, uh, uh, can uh, effectively use it as a tool to, to give feedback to your team members, by all means use this. Don't worry about RISE. 
um, it, it accomplishes the same goal. So, um, and you can see on the back there's some good questions for you to be thinking through and asking to help your help walk your team member through some uh, through their goals. All right. So what we want to do just briefly is a bit of skill practice. All right. So we're going to kind of put this idea of rise or the coach approach into practice. Um, I know some of you will already have lots of practice doing this, but some of you, I think I heard over this direction, someone was kind of newer to this, so um, that's good for us to, to do a little bit of practice. So let's read our uh, scenario here, and you'll see, uh, in case this is too small for you, there's uh, printed up in your, your notes are also the, the, um, the skill practice. So Anne, this, is, this one has to do with core competency of teachability and self-awareness. All right, so Anne is able to articulate that she is doing okay in the, the competency of teachability, self-awareness. She knows her strengths and works to ma maximize her productivity through them. She's graciously open to feedback and tries to incorporate it into her work and life. She takes responsibility for her work, both the good and the bad. You agree that she appears to be meeting expectation in this area but you also want to exhort and to strive towards exceeding the expectation, right? So we want to use rise as a coach approach to provide feedback to Anne. All right, so we are actually going to do a little demonstration for this first skill practice. So I need an Anne. Someone want to be an Anne for me? You, all right, come on down, Anne. Thanks, Thanks Jody slash Anne. I appreciate that. All right, so we'll just do a abbreviated version here. All right. So, make sure I don't sit on the mic here. All right. All right, we're going to assume we went through some some of the pleasantries, right? How you doing? You know, how's how's today been? How would you do on the weekend? All all those kind of uh, icebreaker questions for our conversation here. All right. So, Anne, uh, I wanted to take a few minutes and talk to you today about the core competency of uh, teachability and self-awareness, all right? Um, are you familiar with that? You're, you're pretty familiar? Okay. Well, just to make sure that we're both on the same page and to, to answer any questions you might have, why don't you go ahead and uh, read the definition there. Um, it's right there at the bottom, so, yep, yep, that'd be perfect. The ability to receive feedback or truth well and learn from it has an honest estimate of his or her abilities or capabilities and is self-aware, accepts the same rules for self as he or she expects of others, accepts responsibility for self, does not shift blame, accepts review and input from leadership and peers, and actively seeks feedback in order to grow. All right. As you can see, um, this is the, the rating scale, and we have the um, needs improvement, meets expectation, and exceeds expectation. So what I want you to do is go ahead and read the, the meet expectation, because that uh, hopefully at the bare minimum is where we want to shoot for by the end of the year. And then, um, then uh, as you're reading through it, think a little bit through how you feel like you're doing personally with that, because I'd like to know your perspective on that. So go ahead and read through that, mm -hmm. and then uh, let me know your, your thoughts. I accept feedback and learn from it. He or she maintains an honest estimate of his or own or her own capabilities, uh, accepts the same rules for herself as he or she does for others. Uh, he or she accepts responsibility for self and does not shift blame, um, is open to feedback from leadership and peers, engages in the growth process. All right, so I know this is a bit on the spot, but based on uh, just a, a quick overview of your thoughts. Mm -hmm. um, how do you think you're doing as far as meeting the expectation for that core competency? I think for the most part, it's pretty good. Um, like I really feel like in an atmosphere where if I'm going to be asking others to do something, like I want to make sure that I'm doing it too. Mm -hmm. so yep. I think that's pretty good there. Yep. Um, I don't think I shift blame. Um, Maybe I'm not always super mindful of the growth process, but I think that I am still developing and growing. Okay. I would um, say that's a pretty good and assessment. For the most part, I'd say honest estimate, but I've heard feedback from others that I can be a little harder on myself. So mm -hmm. honest, but maybe a little tighter or something. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good. Good. I'd, notice that I'd say 
uh, probably uh, very, my observations are very similar to yours. And so uh, I think you are uh, definitely meeting expectation, you accept responsibility, you're great at receiving feedback, even I know there's that one situation where it didn't go quite as planned and uh, uh, I'd given you some um, constructive feedback and you were very open to, to, to take that into account and then to really integrate some of those ideas uh, the next time you had that project. So um, I feel like you're, you're doing really well. Um, what I want you to do now is go ahead and read the Exceed Expectation and it's slightly different from the Meet Expectation obviously. Uh, and so think about maybe an area where uh, you might be able to improve to shoot for that exceeds expectation. Okay. Um, welcomes and actively seeks feedback so that he or she is able to apply it to his or her own growth. Uh, is self-aware and has an accurate view of his or, own, or her own capabilities. Willingly applies the same rules that he or she expects of others. Uh, is not a blame shifter, invites input from leaders and others, and is actively Im involved in her growth process. All right. Anything that stands out to you like, oh yeah, that's a bit different, I, should, I can shoot for that. Um, it's possible, like, I think I'm really open to hearing input, but I don't necessarily plan ahead of time to ask somebody, hey, would you give me a heads up? or. Like, I think people can be willing to, but maybe there's a hesitation sometime mm -hmm. to give feedback. And yeah. so if I ask for somebody to look for something, that might give them a heads up and a better opportunity mm -hmm. to give me feedback. Yeah. So maybe I can be a little more active in that. That's a, that's a great observation. In fact, if I, if I had to pick out something to help you move into that exceed category, it'd probably be to, to actually uh, seek out feedback. You're great at receiving it. Um, you're great at incorporating it into your work and into your personal life and it's just that next step is like what you mentioned is uh, having a little bit of forethought to think hey maybe uh, getting some feedback on this thing before it actually happens would be helpful so I'd say definitely uh, do that and you even thought through some ideas how you could do that and I thought think that's great because one of the questions is it's great to to say yes I'm going to do this but the the practical bit of how that's going to happen um, it sounds like you uh, process through already a little bit. So I would uh, exhort you to continue to think through how that would look um, because I think, uh, you know, since you, you accept feedback so well already, it's just going to enhance you and your ability and your contribution to the team. So, all right, we're going to, sorry, I cut you off. <laughs> so there's our role play, kind of using the rise. All right, so we have another role play kind of using the the rise or um, coach approach method here. Let me quickly read that and then you're going to pair up at your tables and uh, have a go at uh, someone being Julie and someone being the team leader and helping Julie walk through this, the process of the critical mission objective. So Julie's critical mission objective is to write six articles for the Worldwide Challenge magazine. It is three quarters way through the year, but she only has three articles written. She has mentioned in casual conversation that she has been struggling with writer's block the last couple of months. Julie has done some research on a couple topics and has amassed a fair bit of material, but hasn't been able to pull together an article recently. So as the team leader, you want to use the rise or coach, pro coach approach process to provide feedback to Julie. All right. So go ahead. We'll take maybe about five minutes for this exercise. Decide who's going to play what. Someone's team leader, someone's Julie. All right. Uh, sorry to have to cut you off, but at least we got the conversation started, right? And we got a little bit of practice with the, the rise and the coach approach. So. By the way, and in, in your packet, I also included this, which is the core competencies with the rating chart. So um, again, it'd be helpful, especially uh, over the next couple months before you actually have to give a rating to your team members to be familiar with the different ratings for the categories. So that's there for you. You can actually download this off the position focus tool, but it'll also be up with the progressive conversation materials. So I wanted to point that out to you. You probably noticed it already. All right, so 
what kind of preparation do you think we need to conduct more of one of these formal progressive conversations? So what, what kind of preparation is going to be needed? I know you have the notes in front of you. But without looking at the notes? You can cheat. You can look at the notes. Yes, Charles. Yeah, it's a good idea. Review their position focus. Okay. Yep. You're going to want to uh, prepare yourself, not not make it last minute, and not wait till the end of the year. Yeah. All right. In other words, you probably want to set some regular times. All right. So pray. That's a good thing. Pray for your team members. Um, I know that sometimes that can just be because we're in a Christian organization, the thing to say, but. Actually, do you take some time to pray for your team members? So hopefully your team members are praying for you. That's, that would be a real encouraging thing, right? Set regular times to meet with your team member, right, to, to discuss uh, position and focus goal or one of the core competencies with them. Uh, kind of begs the question, how often should you meet with your team members in a kind of more of a formal conversation setting like this? Any ideas? A minimum, I would think, of once a month. Okay, we have a minimum once a month. Anybody else want to weigh in? Sometimes that depends too on the individual. Okay, it could, and the team. Okay. Yeah. So I know there's uh, one guy who was in the last training who only supervises because of the way things are broken up. He only reviews one person. All right. And so, and he has a pretty close working relationship with that person anyways, and so um, maybe not nearly as necessary because he's already quite intimately involved with that person on a, on a database, day-to-day basis anyway. So, but some of you may have 10, 20 people who you supervise, maybe more. Um, so part of it's going to depend on your situation, right? Um, but the question really to ask is not how often, but uh, or how often do I need to meet with them? The, the better question is, how often do you need to meet with them in order to, first of all, competently evaluate them, right? Because that's what you're going to need to do at the end. But more impor- importantly, help them keep on track and encourage them, all right? So that's probably the better question to ask. Now, if it's, you know, uh, once a month is sufficient for you to be able to do that, then once a month. If it's more often, like once every second week, Maybe even once a week, depending on what the situation. Um, I asked Barrett uh, what he thought, because I just wanted to get uh, perspective from him. And uh, he was pretty liberal. He said, at the minimum, once a quarter. All right. But he said, uh, more, uh, he, he said more realistically, if you're going to competently evaluate someone and to encourage them regularly, it probably needs to be uh, once a month. So. Does anybody have uh, kind of a regular schedule that they meet with their team members, like maybe once a week or once a second week or once a month? I think, is it Ron? Ron, Ron do you meet with every month, you said? Yeah. Okay, so you have it already kind of scheduled in. Good. You find that's pretty good, a good schedule, or you think you need more? Or? Um, it's great for me. Okay. Um, no, I think it's good. Okay. All right, so just something for you to wrestle through and just some, uh, some basic guidelines for you to think through that. A couple other things um, in preparation. Someone had mentioned uh, looking at the, their goals. And basically, if you work through something like the Progressive Conversation Summary Sheet, that'll help you uh, think through what the goal is, where that person's at from your perspective, right, and help uh, prepare you to give um, some constructive feedback to that person. Uh, and then this isn't like the mid-year conversation where we're really highly encouraging the team member to do some sort of self-evaluation before they come to the meeting. This is a bit more informal and where you're not going to necessarily ask, other than saying maybe to your team member, why don't you print off your position focus goals and kind of informally as they do that. I know that when I've had to do that, you kind of briefly look through the goals anyways just to do a self-assessment of how you're doing. So that's kind of an underhanded way for you to, to have your team members a good underhanded way to have your team members do a small self-evaluation without actually asking them to do it. 
I think the informal process can often be just as powerful, even more powerful, than the formal process of actually sitting down and meeting with someone. And what do I mean by this? Well, how many of you, maybe in the last month, can think of a situation where someone has said something either directly or indirectly or you overheard, or someone's made a gesture to you or made a facial expression or made a uh, physical gesture in some sort that was really kind of negative and kind of demotivated you or made you feel uh, kind of bad. Anybody, has that happened to anybody? Maybe, maybe not in the last month, maybe in the last year? No one? Oh, okay, I've got a few hands, that's good. All right, anybody like to share their demotivating? <laughs> not on your life. Not on your life. Uh, let me give you a quick example. Uh, from my personal life, it's actually from my mom's life, and I'm sure my mom doesn't mind me sharing this. So, uh, uh, when she was uh, probably in college or high school, she uh, was singing up front with a group of people at church, and afterwards, someone, and I don't know if it was directly or indirectly she heard this, but someone had mentioned that they thought she didn't have that great a voice. And so, uh, fast forward several years, and I'm born, and I'm probably eight or nine, and my dad had joined the choir at the church, and I asked, Mom, why don't you join the choir? Because I stand next to her. I think, you have a great voice. Now, uh, you know, yeah, that was an eight-year-old's opinion, but, uh, but I thought she had a great voice. And she says, well, back when I was, you know, younger, I sang up front, and someone gave me this feedback that I, that I wasn't a very good singer, and so, you know, I'm, I'm just not going to sing up front ever again. So that was a real instance where that had kind of a profound impact on my mom. Um, and uh, I thought it was kind of sad that that one comment kind of destroyed her opportunity to serve the Lord and to bless others in that way. So um, now let's think of the opposite side where someone said something really positive to you or they've given you kind of a thumbs up or like, you know, you like you really nailed that or some, some kind of expression or gesture that just kind of made your day and you know that they encouraged, encouraged you through that. All right. Does anybody have an example they want to share? Chris. Same presentation. Same presentation. Okay, that's a good thing. <laughs> okay. said, I've been motivated to set up a lunch with a particular person to discuss the things that you presented about. Okay, so that's good. You knew that you, there's someone was getting some value out of your. All right. So if someone says something bad to, about my training today, I need someone else to come and say something encouraging. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes you don't even know, uh, as as the team leader or as a person that you're really uh, affirming someone and what they're doing informally by the things that you're saying. So it's really a powerful thing. All right, so informal feedback is very powerful. We just discussed that, all right? So this is process and preparation. I lumped it all in one. You need to be intentionally informal, all right? Seems kind of strange to be intentionally informal, but this is what I mean. So you need purposely planned feedback, so times, person, goals, competencies. In other words, Think this is going to take some preparation on your part to do well. Think through uh, how you can intentionally uh, give someone feedback without sitting them down through that formal process. So, for instance, it may be a situation where you look up someone's goals that they're working on, and for that day or maybe, maybe even that week, you're kind of especially looking out for that particular person and ways that you can affirm them in that goal that they're working on. All right? Or it could be one of the core competencies, all right? where you can say, okay, this week or today I'm going to be focused on Christ-centered example. And so as I go around my department, um, I'm going to be looking for opportunities where I can kind of point out to this person, hey, you're doing a great job exemplifying Christ-centered, uh, a Christ-centered example. All right. So that's what I mean, kind of purposely planning informal feedback. All right. And some of you do it a bit more naturally. Like sounds like Jody through asking questions, kind of that coach idea. You do it a bit more naturally. For some of you, you need to do it a bit more intentionally. All right. And that's okay. Um, all right. Take advantage of spontaneous opportunities uh, for feedback. All right. And um, in order to do that, you need to be kind of like what I mentioned, familiar with the core competencies as well as uh, with some of the team member goals. All right? It's not that you need to memorize them, but uh, uh, if someone does something but you, have, you don't know what the core competencies are or you have no idea what your team members are working on, uh, you're missing out on opportunities to, to encourage them and give them feedback. All right? 
Um, and then you can pray for spontaneous opportunities to encourage and give feedback. Let me just give you one example that happened to me about two months ago uh, where I received some feedback uh, kind of informally and it really made quite an impression on me um, and it was a great encouragement to me. So one of the things, as I mentioned earlier, uh, one of my jobs or, or responsibilities in the role that I'm in um, is to help develop and put on these conversation trainings. Well, after we did the mid-year conversation, we had uh, um, kind of a bit of a debrief about how it went. Um, uh, and uh, uh, towards the end of the meeting, I was leaving, and uh, Re Rebecca Kennard, who's part of that team, um, uh, said, uh, thanks for demonstrating dependability on this project. And so when she said that, I was just like, wow. what, what uh, uh, it just gave me a boost. It just let me know that what I was doing was quality, uh, but also that I was, you know, meeting one of the core companies, one of the things I was supposed to be doing uh, as a staff member with, with Crew. So, um, so that was just a really informal but powerful way that she affirmed me, uh, not only in my job, but in, in one of the core competencies. So uh, I encourage you to take advantage of the opportunities. All right. Um, if you look in your packets again, there's this SDC, Staff Development Cycle, informal tracking sheet. And again, uh, another tool for you to use as you see fit. And this is just the way to help you keep track of informal ways, um, uh, things that are happening with your team members. So you see there's a spot for your team member's name, a date, and let's say that you saw something that um, you want to remember to encourage the team member next time you meet with them or at another time maybe you're in a situation where you can't tell that team member right at the moment but you want to affirm them in some way or give them some feedback you can write a short description and maybe a classification if it's one of their critical mission objectives or it's one of the core competencies and again it's just a way to, to help you keep track um, also even if you do for instance like the re feedback Rebecca gave me if she were to take that and write it down into something like this then um, come the end of the year, she's not my supervisor, but uh, if she did that with someone else, then you know that, was, that would have been six months before she's given a final evaluation. She can kind of look over this and say, hey, okay, now okay, this is jogging my memory of all the different things where I you know, saw this person, I gave them feedback, and, and again, provides you another way to make a competent evaluation um, at the end of the year. And so again, it's just another tool for you to use. Again, you, uh, you can get onto the position focus tool and do it all online. On that, if you want to make comments uh, in the notes section. But again, just another tool if you see um, fit to use that as something helpful uh, for you to effectively carry out progressive conversation. All right, uh, next. It's a little bit of skill practice. All right. All right, so we're going to do this fairly quickly. Let me read through the situation and then we're just going to briefly, probably in about two minutes, give some info. How can we give informal feedback to Stephen? All right, so think through this as a, so we're going to process this through as a large group. Stephen is unsure how he's performing in regards to the core competency of personal maturity and feels that he may not meet expectation for that category. As the leader, you have observed Stephen exhibit in several ways that he is on target to meet expectation. He gets reports done with excellence and on time without having to be asked twice. He gets to work on time, puts in a full day work, full, stays, full, full day work, handles problems with coworkers with love and patience, and works out solutions without allowing emotions to skew judgment. In what intentionally informal ways could you encourage Stephen? What might you say? What might you do? All right. So um, as things come to mind, just uh, go ahead and shout them out. I'll maybe take a, a minute or two to process this as a group. Altogether. Yeah, yeah, all together, sorry, yep. Well, I would think that if he's returning in a report regularly, normally you would say thanks, yep. but maybe you could extend that and say thanks, and thanks for always doing this on time. Yeah, or, um, that's a great idea, good. All right, uh, briefly just the product, um, as far as what's the result of kind of these formal uh, or uh, progressive conversation both formal and informal, well, there's, um, there's no official product, right? But you might want to record in, in the position focus tool, conversation summary sheet, or informal tracking sheet, those different things, kind of some of the things that you've been observing or experiencing with that person, all right? And again, for future reference so that you can better give them feedback and ultimately uh, competently evaluate them at the end. 
all right? Um, and in general, this is not the time to make major course corrections, all right? So, um, for instance, when you're starting at the year, you want to give the person enough time to be working on goals. You shouldn't be necessarily, you know, a month in uh, thinking about tossing out a critical mission objective uh, just because the person's finding it difficult, right? Give them time to chew on it, to have a, 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 a really good go at completing it. Um, so, um, so not, not major course objectives, or sorry, major course corrections um, for these progressive conversations, so. Uh, unless absolutely necessary. So. Uh, one other thing I'll, I'll mention at this point too is that, um, and this is probably obvious, but if there's an issue of unprofessionalism, under productivity, consistent unproductivity or uh, ungodliness, that's something you're going to want to deal with in a bit more of a formal way, uh, maybe at a mid-year or if it's toward the end of the year at the, at the culminating conversation. You don't want to be, you know, uh, walking by Joe and say, hey, Joe, you did a terrible job with this. You know, you're, you're totally underproducing, right? So it's, it's probably a, uh, a given, but I just thought I'd, I'd mention that. So, uh, yeah. All right, so work in step with the Spirit. So some concluding marks as you walk through this process work. We talk about walking in step with the Spirit. Work in step with the Spirit, right? You want to be Spirit-filled as you're going through this process. Encourage the team member to make this a uh, process a dialogue so um, it shouldn't just be you the, the the team member feeling like they can never come to you so if they have a question or concern or they're 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 um, uh, having a difficulty or challenge they should be able to come feel free to come to you so if you haven't developed or cultivated that uh, relationship of trust that should be something that you're working on all right um, Right. It's, it's going to take some practice, so especially some of this maybe informal stuff, um, you're going to need to, to practice. And so go ahead, take some time to actually practice. All right. um, silence is not golden. All right. Caring for your staff team means connecting with them often. All right. And that means you're going to, it's going to need to take some time and energy. Um, when I, I had mentioned earlier that I would, did campus ministry in Australia for seven years uh, before I moved on to do staff training and development. And during that time, uh, after the four-year mark of campus ministry, I switched over to being the campus director for our, our, our campus team. And I remember uh, specifically, and this just rings in my mind, uh, one of the uh, particular things that the, the old camp campus director had told me to, to be aware of as I kind of took on this new role um, and he said, make sure that you invest into your staff team, right? Because they're your priority now. And, you know, I was thinking, okay, yeah, that's good. I, I know that I have to invest some in my, in my staff team. Uh, but, um, it, you know, this, this campus director thing shouldn't be too hard. I just, I see what my campus director, it looks like he goes to a few more meetings. He has to respond to a few more emails, maybe reconcile some financial things. But pretty much, it's just doing the job I'm already doing on campus, plus a few added administrative things. Well, if you've been on campus or have been in a, in a leadership role, which you guys are, uh, for any length of time, you begin to notice that if you're not connecting well with your team members, uh, things start to go awry quite quickly. And so first year, I wouldn't say it was a complete disaster, but I learned a lot about myself and my team, uh, probably in not the best situation. So the second year, I, I, I thought, okay, I got to change some things. But by the third year, I finally took to heart what the old campus director had told me about investing in my staff. In fact, I had pared down all, I was only on campus one day, I had pared down all my other responsibilities. I only had one Bible study group that I led, um, and I just discipled a couple guys. It was pretty minimal um, uh, as far as on-the-ground ministry. But I saw such a dynamic difference by the time I ended my third year in our team and the, 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 there was a uh, much uh, more solidified unity. We all uh, headed in the same direction. Um, we all understood the expectations for, for what we were all supposed to do and it just made such a big difference. But I had to come to the realization that it was going to take a lot of my time and effort to do my job well as a, as, as a team leader. And so I mentioned that is that uh, uh, it was interesting, I've even heard some team leaders say that I don't have time to meet with my team members. Well, that's one of your main priorities, okay? So uh, if you don't have time for your team members, um, 
that's, uh, I think, um, really putting aside one of the major responsibilities God's given you. And so uh, the reality is going to take time and energy to care well for your team. But the payoff uh, overall, um, as your team um, is a bit more productive, uh, is happier, uh, it feels like they're um, working on a particular goal together is, is great. And I just share that out of my own experience um, to, to make this a priority. In fact, uh, you, you know, maybe next year thinking about making one of your CMOs um, uh, if it's not. All right, and then finally, this sh overall, it should be a positive, edifying experience of helping your team members move forward and staying focused. Um, on their goals and core competencies. All right. So overall, it's a positive. You're edifying, growing them um, in the process. So um, thanks for sticking with me. Uh, extra two minutes. I appreciate that.